Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be walking you through one of my favorite parts of my ADHD Life Tracker template, which is the food planner, meal planner, and the uh, grocery list. So make sure to subscribe for more videos and check out the link to the ADHD Life Tracker below so you can grab a copy. I'm gonna be walking you through how to use it and how I've set it up so that you can edit it for yourself. So let's get to Notion. All right, so here we are in the template. This is the latest version. I update it quite often. So if you want the latest, make sure to duplicate that. Um, unfortunately with Notion, whenever I update it, you would have to completely duplicate the whole thing again. So unless you want like parts of it, it's just, it's kind of annoying. So anyways, this is the updated version of the template. And so if you click over here, this is the drop down. And you will see I've kind of set it so the first thing that you'll see is groceries. One of the things that I filtered for everyone is that it, both the out of stock and grocery list are the ones that you're seeing on the home page. This is important if you're maybe at the store and you're quickly wanting to see what you need to buy. You could even filter it further and just do only things on the grocery list. That way as you're walking down the aisle you can literally open up on your home page of Notion this specific list. And I'll show you guys how you can change those and, and make that um, so that you have the grocery list status. But basically, this is the first thing you'll see. The next thing you'll see is the daily life tracker. So this will actually have, once you actually start planning your meals, the list of meals right now, it's empty, which we'll go through. I also have added pictures of different recipes. These are all recipes that I've used or have found online. Um, they literally came from my actual recipe. So you can delete them all, start over, build your own recipes out if you want. I just thought it was helpful to kind of show you guys some examples of things that I eat, especially ADHD diet, you know, just try, you know, easy things that you can make quickly. Um, I also have the meal planning week. So this actually is really cool and I'll show you guys this in a second. This actually helps you guys plan your meals for the rest of the week. Um, I like to plan meals weekly instead of monthly. Monthly is just too far ahead of time. So for me, whether it's going grocery shopping every week, that's really how I do that. So, um, and then we've also got a workout summary. I'm not gonna go over the workout stuff today. I'm just gonna go through the food and, and meal planning. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna set up, what are your groceries? So. If you go to the grocery and supplements category, you'll see that it's sorted in a couple different ways. We have the master list, so that's everything that um, you could ever think of that you would ever have in your um, entire you know, house, fridge, etc. Over here, um, you have the name, obviously, of the thing. We've also got the status, so there's quite a few different statuses. In stock is the main one where it's like if you have it in your home, that's what you're going to change the status to. There's a couple of other statuses that are on the not in stock area. So one is out of stock. So that means that you don't have it in stock, but it may not be like super, like you need it now. Um, so that's what I always like put things where if I need them eventually, I put them in out of stock. Grocery list is really the thing that you're going to be buying next. Like that's on your grocery list. So if you need to go to Aldi or wherever you're shopping, that's what you would change it to. Running low is a good one as well, especially for us ADHDers to be like, hey, this is running low. It's not out of stock yet, but I probably should add it soon. Unsure is if you don't know what, where you're at and then don't repurchase is where you just wanna use something up, you're not gonna buy it again. In stock and done, you could, again, change these. You can you get rid of one of them, um, but that's usually how I do it. The next thing you're gonna have is the store that you buy things from. You can add your own. That's really what I would do. You can also have categories. I've added a bunch of different categories, um, whatever that item is part of. And then this is where it gets really cool, is you can actually then link every time you have a recipe what you know what the products are in that recipe. And we'll go through that when we get over to recipes. But this is where you, it shows up, where you can see what recipe that specific item is in. This is a really important one that I really like, and I use this for a lot of different templates, is the room location. So it actually, you can tag where in your house it's located. So. I have kitchen cupboard, kitchen refrigerator, freezer, even things like bathroom. So like, for example, if it's toothpaste, which you could add to, I guess, a grocery list. Um, most of the stuff is in the kitchen, obviously. Um, again, this is a related database. So it's linking over to the room option, which we'll, I'll go through. Then you've got frequency. So that's how often you use it. Cost, this is important if you are on a budget and you're trying to figure out, okay, where's the cheapest thing of this? 
This is another important one, um, expiration date. You could put even the month um, when it expires so that you know to get through things, especially for ADHDers. Um, this I'm going to delete because that is not part of it. So yeah, so those are the things that is part of the groceries and supplements option. Um, you can see on the second one, this is again a filtered view of the master list where the status is either running low or is grocery list. So right now that's, you can also add another filter where it's you know out of stock. You can do whatever you want. Right now, these are the two things that I have set up for that. I also have a pill section, so this is kind of separate. So if you have supplements that you are um, you know, using, these are just a list of ones that I have seen ADHDers use, so you can also have that as a kind of a separate list as well. So going back, so if you actually go back to the health pillar, that's actually where these are all stored. The ones on the front are actually a filtered view of each of these databases. We kind of went through the groceries and supplements, um, I want to talk specifically about meals and recipes and how that links back over to the groceries and supplements. So, okay, so here you'll see all of the different recipes um, that I have. And some of them I've labeled like favorites, new, that kind of thing. You can add those. But what you'll see is um, a picture of the item as well as some of them actually have links inside to the uh, different things. So for example, if I was going to click on this smoothie, if I open it up completely, you will see that I've actually linked to all of the ingredients inside of that grocery list that is needed for this recipe. And if you scroll down, you'll actually see the measurements of all the things that you need for this recipe. This is actually one of my favorite smoothie recipes. So you can actually see, I could have a link if I know the exact link, which I probably will add. You can also put the status, is this a favorite? This is a favorite of mine, so I'll add that. You can also add things like different equipment that you need. So for me, Blender is a use for this. The reason that I do this is, for example, if I go back to Meals and Recipes, I could filter it if I just wanna see all of the ones where I'm using a blender. Let's just find the blender. So I could see all of my recipes that need a blender. So it's just another way to see, oh, these are all smoothies. So again, you can kind of figure out exactly how you wanna view this if you wanna see it in a certain way. Then you've got the ease of making. This is helpful if you are like, I have 10 minutes, I have 15 minutes, I have 20 minutes, um, as well as it also has the temperature and the minutes. And this is specifically for things that need to go like in an oven or air fryer. Um, with a smoothie, it's a little bit different. Um, and then you could also add the directions here. I usually just put them here in the bottom part, um, but I just wanted to add that for people if they wanted to. So basically this is how you would capture all of the uh, recipe information for that. Another thing that I also wanna mention is if you find a really nice recipe like on Pinterest or on the internet, you can actually use the save to Notion option, which I'll go through in a second. Um, and that actually allows you to save all the information into this board, which is super cool. So that's kind of a walkthrough of how this works. You can see I've sort of filtered it up here into like just smoothies. So this is filtered by the type. So this is the equipment that contains blender. That's gonna be a smoothie. This one, I have filtered it so that it's only things that use an air fryer. So you can really just choose however you wanna filter it, etc. So all of these are linked back over with their ingredients to the recipe. Um, or the grocery board, so that's really cool. But I wanna go back to the front page and walk through um, kind of how you can start planning your meals, right? So that's an important step. One of the things I like to do on here is have a weekly view of what I want. So for example, um, let me go through here and click edit. You will see now that there are three different options. This is actually a new feature in Notion where you can actually edit within looking at it in line. So you actually don't have to have this pop out, which is so helpful, especially for my life tracker. It's going to be super helpful. So what you're going to do where it says add breakfast, you're just going to start typing. So if I wanted to have oatmeal, that's going to be what I have for breakfast. Now what's cool about this is that within the life tracker now, Okay, so on this, then you are going to see that it will pop up down here on the daily life tracker. So that is linked to here. So everything, so if I added another meal, so if I added egg, you'll see it now gets added down to the life tracker. So it kind of helps you see um, all the things that you've been doing that day. So that is should be updated and is connected. Everything should be working. 
Um, so anyway, so if you want to, you could start doing that every day for the rest of the week. You could start planning. You have a list of all of your meals. So that way you're looking at it. Another thing you can do, which I have added, um, and I can do this right now. I'm actually planning to do this is you can create a roll up of all the ingredients that you need. So if you go over to the relation and type in, um, let's just put breakfast. You can actually see all of the ingredients that you will need for that breakfast. So within oatmeal, and then we're gonna rename that breakfast. Um, let's see, ingredients. So if I went over to oatmeal, you will see right now, oatmeal doesn't have any ingredients, but if I add oats, old fashioned oats, let's just go back. Now, if you go for today, you'll see old fashioned oats has been rolled up. So what a roll up does is it actually takes, um, all the stuff from one database and basically summarizes it. That's really what a rollup is. So if I made another rollup, um, let me go over and let's do, let's call this lunch ingredients. This kind of helps you see what you need to buy for each meal. Let's go to lunch and then we'll, t and then we'll pick ingredients. Um, obviously we haven't had anything with eggs. So for the egg, let's add the ingredients, which is egg. Now, if we go back, you will see eggs are now in the ingredient. We will do that for dinner as well. Dinner, ingredients. Again, a roll-up, again, is just rolling up all the information from one database to another. So let's go to dinner, and then we're going to select the ingredients. We haven't chosen our dinner yet, so if we were going to go over here, um, or you could do it from here, let's type in, um, trying to think of one I know that has ingredients. I think this one does. Maybe not. Which one, which one do I know has ingredients? <laughs> um, let's see. I know that that, um, let's just pretend that we're doing the smoothie. So if we wanted to have the apple vinegar smoothie, you will see all of those will pop down. So you can choose, um, oops, sorry. You can choose if you'd like to uh, view a property where you can actually see all the ingredients if you'd like to. So you could show the breakfast ingredients, that way you're seeing it at a glance. Um, so that is another option as well, if you'd like to see all the things that you need for that week, um, especially if you're going grocery shopping and you need to know what's on each other's menus, right? So that is kind of a quick summary of the groceries and meal planning sort of stuff that you can set up for yourself. I think this way is really helpful where it's in the board view. You can kind of see what's coming up for the week. Again, going back to the groceries, you can see all the stuff that you need to buy. Um, I did wanna walk through how to um, save things to your meal plan from uh, going on the computer. So let's cut over to um, Chrome real quick. All right, so let's just say we're on Pinterest and we find a really good recipe. Let's click into it. So you just go to the link and then make sure that you're on Google Chrome and you're gonna install the no Save to Notion button. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that you have logged into Notion on this and then basically you just link it together. And then what you can do is you can type in the board. I would recommend the, the meal slash recipe board. So I'm just gonna save it here. This is actually my personal one. So if I click save page, Let's open it in Notion. So now it's gonna actually show you that I have saved it. So again, this is my personal one. It will show, unfortunately it doesn't add the cover, you'll have to add that later, but you'll show, it'll show the name, the link, and then down here it'll have everything that you need. So for this ingredients, you're gonna just wanna copy this. So you'll put chicken thighs. So you'll just go up here, type in chicken thighs, and then you can select all the ingredients. And that way you can see kind of uh, above view of that. So again, that's just another way to save um, recipes to your board. This is a free, it's called Save to Notion. It's a Google Chrome extension. All you do is you go to uh, Save to Notion, um, Chrome extension. This is actually the like official Notion one. So if you click here, that's the one I have is the Notion Web Clipper. It says Save to Notion, it's, that's the official one. So I hope that that was helpful um, if you want to save recipes from like Pinterest. So you can almost use Notion like Pinterest where it saves all of your information. So anyways, you can get all of this in my uh, Notion Life Tracker, ADHD Life Tracker. Um, that's a big thing that I use Notion for is planning my meals. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. Make sure to subscribe for more, join our Facebook group, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.